So anyone who's familiar with me or my channel probably knows I'm pretty interested in the Mega Man Battle Network franchise. I collect the PETs, toys, trading cards, battle chips, and just about anything else, even some of the store for stuff. So as a collector, why would I want bootleg battle chips? Well, there are a few interesting reasons. There are some chips that are nearly impossible to find online. Also for Battle Network 4's hidden operation battle mode, there were special Navi chips that weren't released in the US that would allow you to play as those specific Navis in this boss rush mode. Now in order to program these chips, you have to have a general understanding of how they work. They're pretty simple. Progress PET and Advanced PET chips are exactly the same except for the physical shape of the plastic. They both have exactly 11 metal pins, and the way they're programmed is, if you were to open them up, you'd see that some of the pins are connected to the 10th pin, which is the ground pin, and some are not. Based on which ones are connected to the ground pin determines what the actual programming of the chip is. The ones connected to the ground pin will call live pins, and the rest that are not connected will call dead pins. Next, you'll need to figure out the programming of the chip you want to turn it into. In this example, I'm turning a wide sword into Delta Ray Edge, and I'm turning a wide blade into a base chip. But don't worry, you don't need to open up your battle chips to figure out the codes. I found a list online in Japanese that has the battle chip codes for many of the advanced PET chips. I translated it and re-uploaded it to my Google Drive, so you can just look at this list to figure out what your codes are. I made a list from scratch for a progress PET, so you can look up that too if you're trying to make progress chips. And like I said before, progress PET chips and advanced PET chips have the exact same board style, so if you wanted to make a progress PET chip out of an advanced PET chip, that will work just fine. Just one thing to watch out for when looking for the list is Navi chips and Navi double sole chips are not exactly the same. If you see a chip listed with the word Navi by it, that means it's a double sole chip, which can be used for double sole on the Progress PET and can also be used for the Operation Battle in Battle Network 4. Alright, now let me know the layout of the chip and the layout of the chip that we want to make. We should be able to actually figure out what we need to do to make this chip exactly the same as the other one. Since we have a few live pins over here, we have to bridge them to make this chip match the one we want to create. Alright, looking at this diagram, it looks like Delta Ray Edge requires pins 2 and 3 to be alive, as well as 6 and 7. Other than that, we're pretty much good to go. So in order to do that, we're going to bridge some of these pins. We have 4 and 5 live, so we're going to bridge those to the rest of the pins we need to have alive. These chips are just basically simple circuits, so any type of metal can be used to bridge the pins. Just bridge the dead pins with a live one, and then once you have it matching your original chip, then you're done. Now let's look at another scenario. This is for the Progress PET chips. Um, if you notice, if we do the exact same type of bridging on the Progress PET chips, you'll notice that, hey, we have quite a few more live pins than we actually need. Ideally, you should plan ahead and pick the best chip that closely matches what you're trying to make, but if you don't have any choice, then sometimes you have to do this. We have all the pins currently activated, so what we have to do is we have to find a way to kill the pins we don't need. There are two ways to do this. You can either mask them off using tape, since the tape will block your PET or battleship gate from actually being able to read that pin. All you have to do is cover up that specific pin with tape, and it will be counted as dead. The more permanent way of doing it is to physically actually cut the pin from the ground wire. In order to do this, all you have to do is cut right below the bridge, and then the end of the pin that connects to the PET or battleship gate will not be connected to the ground, so your PET will read that pin as dead. Alright, let's see this process in action. As you can see, I already printed out a label for this chip. I'm going to be making a roll navy chip. And yes, we're going to be using a soldering iron for this. So if you don't feel comfortable using that or you don't have one, there's still a tape and foil method. I have a link to that up on screen, so you can just do that if you don't feel comfortable. But this is the most permanent method, and as long as you take your time, it should come out pretty well. And remember, use a simple chip, which doesn't require as much soldering. Anyway, so the first thing you gotta do is make your bridge, just as I showed before. Just I'm putting a few drops on the contacts, and I try to push them together. I find that giving it a little bit of extra solder and just moving really, really slowly is the best way to get the actual bridge working. These battle chips are made out of really cheap plastic, and the board under it is cheap too, so you gotta be really careful. Only have the soldering iron contacting the board for a maximum two seconds. You don't want to burn a hole through the board or melt the contacts. I've had both happen to me before. With a decent soldering iron, it should only take a few minutes to get all your bridges done, but my $8 one didn't fare so well. But eventually did get it to work. When you get it completely finished, you want to go ahead and turn the chip sideways and make sure you don't have any solder sticking up higher than the actual chip's plastic. If it does, it will probably get snagged inside your battleship gate, or it may not fit inside your PET. So try to keep the solder as low as possible. 
The next step is cutting in contacts. You can either use a good quality pocket knife, but an X-Acto knife will probably be better. Just simply run it over the contact right before the bridge as high up as possible, and that should cut off that contact from the ground connection. To do this, I put the tip of my knife right before the contact I want to cut, and I apply pressure to the back of the knife. That gives me enough pressure to actually cut through that single contact, but not enough for me to cut through all the other contacts. In order to make a clean cut, you may have to go over it a couple times. If you cut the wrong contact, like I embarrassingly did, you can simply just roll some of the solder from your bridge over the cut, and then boom, the pin is live again. Once you're done with the cutting, it's a good idea to go ahead and double check your diagrams. If it all checks out, you can go ahead and test it. I find the Progress PET to be the fastest way to test any chips. All you have to do is just turn it on, plug in the chip, and press one button, and it will go ahead and tell you what battle chip it is. This is the unknown chip error message. If you get that, or if it picks up the wrong chip, that probably means you did something wrong. Go back and double check your diagram. You may have to redo your cuts a little bit, make them a little bit deeper, double check your bridge, all that. After I redid my cuts, I went ahead and tested the chip again. This time it showed up as the wrong battle chip, so I went ahead and double checked everything and it seemed okay. Turned out it was just dirty contacts. Wiping off the contacts, I was able to get the right chip detected. So let's go ahead and test it out in Battle Network 4. And the chip works flawlessly. It works just as it would if I had an official Navi chip and I'm able to use it just fine. If you want to make your own progress PET chips or your own link PET chips, the process is exactly the same. Unfortunately, I haven't fully decoded link PET chips yet, so you can't program the entire library. But there are still like one or two you can pick. Anyway, so um, I guess post in the comments what would be the first chip you'd make if you were to make some, or if you did make one, what did you make? And I guess I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!